A huge night in Iowa for Barack Obama and Mike Huckabee. CNN projects they will be the winners as the Iowa caucuses shake up the race for president in a big way. Welcome back to our viewers. I'm Will Flitzer at CNN Election Center. Check out these numbers. On the Democratic side, Senator Barack Obama finishes on top in a tight three-way race. And just look at how close it is between John Edwards and Senator Hillary Clinton for second place. The results are already producing casualties. Sources telling CNN Senator Chris Dodd of Connecticut is now dropping out of the race. And he may not be the only one. On the Republican side, Mike Huckabee cruises to a relatively, relatively easy victory over Mitt Romney. That's huge when you consider how much time, effort, and money Romney invested in Iowa. Former Senator Fred Thompson and Senator John McCain are in a tight battle right now for third place in Iowa. We're going to be hearing from all of the top uh, finishers as well as some very important absentees. We're also looking at why why Huckabee and Obama emerged as the night's big winners. And I want to bring in our numbers and point out to you exactly what we know. First on the, uh, uh, first on the Republican side, let's walk over and take a close look. 85% of the Republican precincts have now officially reported. Huckabee with 34%, he's the winner. Romney coming in second with 25%. Look at this battle for third place in Iowa. 13% for McCain, 14% for Thompson. Now, if you want to take a closer look at how these percentages emerged, we're going to show you right now among the Republicans. The Republicans basically have a straw poll. All of the people go in and they vote. They vote for their respective candidates. And if you take a look at Huckabee, he got more than 35,000, almost 26,000 for Romney. But look at uh, uh, Fred Thompson and John McCain. They're really battling for third place right now with 85% of the precincts reporting. Only a few hundred votes separate Thompson and McCain. Ron Paul emerging uh, relatively good numbers with uh, almost 10,000 uh, in Iowa. Giuliani disappointing. 3,500. Duncan Hunter only 452. You take a look at that. You see that there are 40 delegates at stake. Uh, 37 uh, uh, delegates at stake out of the total of Iowa Republicans going to their convention in St. Paul, Minneapolis. And those are the numbers right now in Iowa. Let's move over now and take a look at the Democrats. What happened on the Democratic side tonight. A dramatic win for Barack Obama. As we said, 97% of the precincts have now officially reported Barack Obama, and we're still waiting to hear from him tonight. He'll be speaking to his supporters shortly. We'll bring you his remarks live. 38% for Obama. Look at this battle for second place that's still underway between John Edwards and Hillary Clinton. Uh, Edwards with 30%, Clinton with 29%, Richardson down at 2%, everybody else lower. But let's take a closer look at how these percentages emerge. And it's a very, very difficult set of numbers than the Republican side. On the Republican side, you had the raw tallies. The Democrats don't do that. They don't tell us the raw numbers. Uh, they just give us the numbers, the percentages of the delegates that will go to the Iowa State Convention. And they have a complicated formula how they get to these numbers. And as of right now, with 97% of the precincts reporting, Obama has 914 of these delegates. Uh, to Edward, 727. Looks like he's in second place right now. Clinton with 716. Richardson, Biden, Chris Dodd, uh, everybody else way, way down. Once again, these are the delegates to the state convention that, that are uh, allocated based on a very complex formula that the Democrats have. You don't see the raw numbers there, but you do see the percentages. There are 57 national delegates who will go to the Democratic National Convention in Denver at the uh, end of August. 45 are at stake by this process, and right now CNN estimates that Barack Obama will get 18 of those those delegates, Edwards 17, Clinton 16. If that holds up, Senator Clinton will emerge as the third place winner. The third place, a disappointing third place for her in Iowa. Once again, we're standing by to hear from Senator Barack Obama. He's going to be addressing his supporters momentarily at uh, Obama headquarters out in Des Moines. Once he does, we'll go there live. You heard from uh, Mike Huckabee. You heard him speak to his supporters. A very, very good night for him. An excellent night for Barack Obama. They now move on in five days to New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, 
Different scene, different set of Democrats, different set of Republicans. We don't know what's going to emerge in New Hampshire. We don't know what the impact of what has happened tonight in uh, Iowa will be on voters in New Hampshire. We do know it's a five-day period, though, that all of these candidates will have to get their act together and to move on to New Hampshire. Barack Obama walking uh, in with his daughters, Michelle Obama, his wife. He's getting ready to address his supporters. They are so pumped up. They are so excited over what happened tonight. Barack Obama, a young man in his mid-40s, has now won the Iowa caucuses that he's about to speak to his supporters and get ready for the next contest in five days in New Hampshire, uh, where the polls show it's very, very tight right now. We don't know what the impact, the bounce will be from Iowa on New Hampshire. We do know that his supporters are very, very pumped up and excited as a result of tonight's dramatic win in Iowa. I should point out to our viewers, he's had some trouble with his uh, voice over the past day or two. He's been working really hard. It's been really cold out there. So if his voice sounds a little bit weak tonight, you'll know he's been losing some of that voice. Not necessarily a great time for that to happen, but I'm sure uh, he'll overcome that problem with uh, the whole notion of this victory. Uh, Barack Obama with his supporters. And, and as you see that banner behind him, change. We can believe in. That's been his theme from day one. He's focused in on change, not necessarily experience, but that a theme of change has clearly paid off in Iowa for him tonight. Uh, right now with 98% of the vote officially uh, counted, he's got 38% to John Edwards' 30, Hillary Clinton's 29. Uh, uh, Barack Obama is about to speak in, and we're going to want to Listen in very, very closely to hear what he has to say, just as we listen closely to Mike Huckabee, who's the Republican winner. Let's get ready to listen to the junior senator from Illinois, Barack Obama. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Iowa. Yo, know, they said, they said, they said this day would never come. They said our sights were set too high. They said this country was too divided, too disillusioned to ever come together around a common purpose. But on this January night, at this defining moment in history, you have done what the cynics said we couldn't do. have done what the state of New Hampshire can do in five days. You have done what America can do in this new year, 2008. In lines that stretched around schools and churches, in small towns, and in big cities, you came together as Democrats, Republicans, and independents to stand up and say that we are one nation, we are one people, and our time for change has come. You said, the time has come to move beyond the bitterness and pettiness and anger that's consumed Washington, to end the political strategy that's been all about division and instead make it about addition, to build a coalition for change that stretches through red states and blue states.
because that's how we'll win in November, and that's how we'll finally meet the challenges that we face as a nation. We are choosing hope over fear. We're choosing unity over division and sending a powerful message that change is coming to America. You said the time has come to tell the lobbyists who think their money and their influence speak louder than our voices that they don't own this government. We do, and we are here to take it back. The time has come for a president who will be honest about the choices and the challenges we face, who will listen to you and learn from you even when we disagree, who won't just tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to know. And in New Hampshire, if you give me the same chance that Iowa did tonight, I will be that president for America. I'll be a president who finally makes health care affordable and available to every single American the same way I expanded health care in Illinois by, by bringing Democrats and Republicans together to get the job done. I'll be a president who ends the tax breaks for companies that ship our jobs overseas and put a middle-class tax cut into the pockets of working Americans who deserve it. I'll be a president who harnesses the ingenuity of farmers and scientists and entrepreneurs to free this nation from the tyranny of oil once and for all. And I'll be a president who ends this war in Iraq and finally brings our troops home. Who restores our moral standing, who understands that 9-11 is not a way to scare up boats, but a challenge that should unite America and the world against the common threats of the 21st century. Common threats of terrorism and nuclear weapons, climate change and poverty, genocide and disease. Tonight, we are one step closer to that vision of America because of what you did here in Iowa. And so I'd especially like to thank the organizers and the precinct captains, the volunteers, and the staff who made this all possible. And while I'm at it, on thank yous, I think it makes sense for me to thank the love of my life, the rock of the Obama family, the closer on the campaign trail. Give it up for Michelle Obama. You. You. I know you didn't do this for me. You did this, you did this because you believed so deeply in the most American of ideas, that in the face of impossible odds, people who love this country can change it. I know this. I know this because while I may be standing here tonight, 
I'll never forget that my journey began on the streets of Chicago doing what so many of you have done for this campaign and all the campaigns here in Iowa, organizing and working and fighting to make people's lives just a little bit better. I know how hard it is. It comes with little sleep, little pay, and a lot of sacrifice. There are days of disappointment, but sometimes, just sometimes, there are nights like this. A night, a night that years from now, when we've made the changes we believe in, when more families can afford to see a doctor, when our children when Malia and Sasha and your children inherit a planet that's a little cleaner and safer, when the world sees America differently and America sees itself as a nation less divided and more united, you'll be able to look back with pride and say that this was the moment when it all began. This was the moment when the improbable beat what Washington always said was inevitable. This was the moment when we tore down barriers that have divided us for too long, when we rallied people of all parties and ages to a common cause, when we finally gave Americans who'd never participated in politics a reason to stand up and to do so. This was the moment when we finally beat back the politics of fear and doubt and cynicism, the politics where we tear each other down instead of lifting this country up. This was the moment. Years from now, you'll look back and you'll say that this was the moment this was the place where America remembered what it means to hope. For many months, we've been teased, even derided, for talking about hope. But we always knew that hope is not blind optimism. It's not ignoring the enormity of the task ahead or the roadblocks that stand in our path. It's not sitting on the sidelines or shirking from a fight. Hope is that thing inside us that insists despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us if we have the courage to reach for it and to work for it and to fight for it. Hope is what I saw in the eyes of the young woman in Cedar Rapids who works the night shift after a full day of college and still can't afford health care for a sister who's ill. A young woman who still believes that this country will give her the chance to live out her dreams. Hope is what I heard in the voice of the New Hampshire woman who told me that she hasn't been able to breathe since her nephew left for Iraq, who still goes to bed each night praying for a safe return. Hope is what led a band of colonists to rise up against an empire, what led the greatest of generations to free a continent and heal a nation, what led young women and young men to sit at lunch counters and brave fire hoses and march through Selma and Montgomery for freedom's cause. Hope. Hope is what led me here today. With a father from Kenya, a mother from Kansas, and a story that could only happen in the United States of America. Hope is the bedrock of this nation, the belief that our destiny will not be written for us, but by us, by all those men and women who are not content to settle for the world as it is, who have the courage to remake the world as it should be. That is what we started here in Iowa, and that is the message we can now carry to New Hampshire and beyond.
one, the same message we had when we were up and when we were down, the one that can change this country brick by brick, block by block, callous hand by callous hand, that together, ordinary people can do extraordinary things because we are not a collection of red states and blue states. We are the United States of America. And in this moment, in this election, we are ready to believe again. Thank you, Iowa. Uh, Barack Obama, he has emerged the winner of the Democratic caucuses in Iowa, speaking to his supporters, now getting ready to move on to the next battle. That would be in New Hampshire. Barack Obama decisively winning among the three front runners in Iowa, John Edwards, Hillary Clinton, uh, right now with 98%. 98% of the Democratic precincts officially reporting Obama has 38%. He's the winner. Uh, John Edwards, 30%. Hillary Clinton, 29%. If this stays the way it is, she will come in third in Iowa. Uh, we've got some other news we want to report right now. Joe Biden, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, will drop out as a Democratic presidential candidate, CNN has now confirmed. Early Earlier, report, we reported that Chris Dodd, the senator from Connecticut, also has decided to drop out of this race. Both of these uh, U.S. senators not doing well at all in Iowa. They pinned a lot of their hopes on doing well in that state. They didn't do well, and as a result, both Joe Biden and Chris Dodd will drop out. We're still waiting to hear from some of the other candidates. By the way, at the top of the hour, midnight Eastern time, there will be a special Larry King Live, and Larry's going to be speaking to a lot of these presidential candidates, among them Mike Huckabee.